Hello everyone, it's Martin Pahiniak and welcome everyone to Yes I'm a Designer's live stream here on YouTube. I'm glad to be back and today we have an amazing live stream. Hopefully you will like it. I prepared a lot of interesting content. I tried to again have a very action-packed uh, seminar and um, I also like to try always new things out. So today I prepared a survey as well which you can find already the link to um, under the video and this link will be available even after uh, the seminar is finished so after we stop the stream it will be available the recorded version on my channel and you will still be able to do this uh, survey it's just few questions and it just helps me and my team to come up with new topics and to really fine-tune what we are going to show you in the next streams but today is all about InDesign so InDesign is the application that I dedicated most of my time recently because I just finished creating the InDesign Masterclass. Um, this seminar today is going to be bits and bobs from the masterclass so I'm trying to show you as much as possible uh, within this one or one and a half hours long session and the way I combined what I'm going to show you is by showing you 10 things that InDesign does best so um, these are features that are best if you do it in InDesign. So we know that in Illustrator and Photoshop we can do a lot of creative techniques as well and um, I had already previously a seminar which I did with my wife Shumi about talking about the differences between these three applications and just as a reminder I show you again here on my screen uh, we compared these three applications and talked about what are they best used for and what you should avoid them for and then what are the most important unique features in each of them and uh, today it's all about InDesign so this is what we are going to concentrate on so obviously I won't be able to cover all the unique features but I will show you those features that you won't really find in any of the other applications and I'm going to show you with cool examples and by the way these examples you will be able to find also on my Patreon channel um, or my Patreon page so the exercise files that I usually share uh, will be uploaded there after I finish uh, today's stream and you will be able to download and practice what we go through today just like uh, in the other occasions as well. So um, I, without any further delay, I would like to get started. And then uh, if I need to stop for a bit uh, to reply to some of your questions, I will maybe try to do that during the session, but most likely I will do it at the end. So um, if you want to use the chat to talk to each other, feel free to do so. Uh, but I won't have time to really look at it at, uh, at this moment. Uh, I will try to reply to questions more around the end. But once again, if you have some time in the, in, during the presentation or closer to the end, you will find the link to the questions that I included in the survey below and feel free to do so either now or after the session. Okay, so uh, thank you everyone for anyone who managed to join me live. And don't worry if you if you uh, missed anything. This is whole uh, the whole session is going to be recorded anyway. All right. So um, hopefully the sound is working. I I, I just see uh, that someone said that the sound is gone. Hopefully it's it came back. Uh, I think I know why the sound was out. Let me just double check. Yeah, I can see it. All right. So, um, continuing the uh, slides that I have here prepared, um, I also showed last time a few examples. Um, cool. So, I showed these examples last time. So, InDesign is used as a page layout application and it's all about working with type and images and creating perfect composition for print or for interactive output. 
And uh, the first thing that I want to show you is actually, it's, it's a little bit of an, a bonus tip. So uh, without, before even getting into the, the 10 features that I wanted to talk about, I already mentioned something that is an integration between InDesign and Photoshop, or it could be even between Illustrator. But let me just show you this. This is a PSD file here, which I have on my first page in this InDesign document. And this whole composition I did in Photoshop, even the text is placed on it in Photoshop. And just to show you, if I go to Object Layer Options, so when I right click on a PSD file, I can choose Object Layer Options. And when I choose that option, I actually see all the layers in this Photoshop file. So if I decide that I don't need to show the InDesign icon, I can just turn it off. So I access all the Photoshop layers directly from within InDesign. So that's all just simply by placing an in a Photoshop file, which has its layers. And then from within InDesign, you can access them and and enable or disable them. So if I go to the uh, additional layers that I have here, I can find that we have a few additional things like adjustment layers, like this one here, if I turn it off, then it changes how the image looks again because of the uh, adjustment has been turned off. Or there's another one again, which changes the colors and so on and so forth. So it's almost like accessing all the things that you've done in Photoshop directly from within InDesign. How cool is that? And by the way, if you want to move things around, like let's say I want to keep that InDesign icon on this composition, but I decide to move it to the left, then what you need to do is to remember this shortcut. It's simply holding down the Alt or Option key and then double click on your image frame, which holds the PSD file and that will open it up in Photoshop. So let me just switch to Photoshop. I think it's going to be hidden somewhere. Let me just try to turn it off for now. Okay, so what, what you need to do is to Alt double click on the image and that was, as you can see, opens it up already in Photoshop. And here we will be able to do more than just simply accessing the layers because here we will be able to make changes to the layers. Like if I want to move the icon, I can obviously move it to the left side. If I want to make it bigger, I can use the free transform tool, which is command or control T and I can place it maybe here. And then if I decide to move the text, the 10, I can also do that. And notice, by the way, the reason I'm using Photoshop is because I'm using masking to be able to have this text going behind the hill. And I done that by just using a simple vector mask. So to, we talked about Photoshop and masking in another stream, but I might be able to do another stream specifically on masking. If you guys are interested, just let me know. And um, I am going to uh, keep this the way it is. And I am going to save the changes that I've done here. And if I come back to InDesign, you will see that it already updated there. So you probably didn't really see what happened in InDesign because we were spending our time in Photoshop. But as soon as I saved it, it automatically synchronized the changes and it comes up here. So it updates. Okay, I can see that uh, there's also already interesting uh, masks. So that's great. So the next thing I wanted to show you, and this is actually just before I get to the 10 features that I prepared, is text wrap. And that's the, that's the first one that is definitely something you should do in InDesign. Although there is a way of doing it in Illustrator as well, it's not as powerful and it's not as convenient as to do it in InDesign. Now, don't worry if you don't actually see the text. Yeah, I intentionally have a very small uh, text size on this uh, page. But uh, if, if, it's in, it's if, it, uh, sorry, if it's important to see the text, then it will be bigger. I, I will zoom closer to it. It's more about the composition here. So what is text wrap work first of all? You can see that I have an image here on the right, these parrots. If I move that around, you will see that the text automatically changes. So wherever I move it, the text automatically gets pushed away from where the image is placed. And that's how text wrap works. And the easiest way to set it up is by simply using the control or command Alt W 
which will bring you the text wrap panel. But of course, if you keep the text wrap panel handy, it's simple, just simply click on that. So having the image selected, having the text wrap option on, that's what happens. If I turn the option off and I just zoom closer, so this is the text wrap panel. This is how it looks like when I have no text wrap on. And this is how it looks when I have it on. So once again, before and after. And once I have the text wrap on, I can decide what type of text wrap I want. So I can choose to have margins around my image. I can increase values like top margin. And then as you can see, it can have more space above the image, or maybe I can have less. And by the way, you can see that I am using shift key when I'm clicking on the arrows to quickly increase the size. So instead of going one by one, I'm using shift click on these arrows to go higher and lower much faster. So if I want, I can have the same offset all around. If I turn this on, now I have 10 or 20 pixels all around the image and so on and so forth. So these are just the basic settings, but I'm going to show you quickly a couple of very important features you need to know about text wrap. So first of all, if I want to set text wrap up on a rounded or circular frame instead of around a rectangular frame, there is a different text wrap you need to use. So let me just make this image slightly bigger so we can see it better. So if I go to the text wrap panel again, I can, instead of using the first option that we used before, here I'm going to use the wrap around object shape, which will help me to create this nice curved outline. And again, I can use the margin to keep it slightly further away from the image. So that is going to look uh, again similar to the previous effect, but more interesting because we have a circular frame. Now there's one thing here immediately I would like to recommend to keep an eye out for, and that is if you have your text left aligned, or we also call it sometimes flush left, then it's not the best thing to do to have the text, uh, I mean the image to be placed on the left side because it might make it a little bit tricky to read uh, the text. So if your text is left aligned, you might want to put the image on the right side and then it's less difficult to read it. But the other problem is that if you are using text wrap, especially like an, a shape like this, then it might not look as nice and even on the text. So maybe you want to try justification on the text. So use Command Shift or Control Shift J, that's the shortcut. But of course you can access this from the options as well under the paragraph options, you will find justification there. If you use justification, then you will be able to have a nice straight line on the left. So it's easy to get back to the text to read it. But then on the right side, we have a nice perfect round uh, cut into the text using the text wrap uh, uh, wrap around object shape option. So that's just a thing to keep in mind when you use these type of text wraps. And then let me show you if we use an image like this, which has um, no uh, shape, like distinct shape. Let me just show you if this is image is in front of the text. It actually has a white background. Okay. But if I move it all the way the, to the back by right clicking and choosing arrange send to back, then we won't have to worry about the white background overlapping with the text, but the text is still overlapping the image or the illustration. So what I'm doing at this point is again using the object shape option. So the same what we use for the other image, wrap around object shape, but then under the contour options, I'm using detect edges, detect edges, will be able to identify the outlines in the image. And I can again add margin around it. So we can increase that like this. And then we have a very nice effect. So let me just move this image a little bit back so I can zoom out as well. And then if I move the image maybe somewhere there, then we have the illustration overlapping the text just in a subtle way. And of course we can make this illustration bigger and then maybe it's even more interesting having it almost like a drop cap or like a, a lead in into the text. All right. But of course we would be able to use this on the other side as well. 
and have the girl here or we can also reflect images by using the flip horizontal option here in the options bar let me just zoom over a bit that's the flip horizontal option and then we can have her going the other way as well and here's another very important thing if you are using text wrap and you want to place the image to a certain point but then you notice that your text is actually getting messed up because you end up having very short words or even just fractions of words on the right side then from the text wrap panel what you should choose instead of wrap to both right and left sides you need to use largest area and that will automatically keep the text away from these small separated parts so if I turn it back on again to both right and left edges, you see there's the problem. And then if I choose largest area, then it automatically will keep track of what are the larger areas. So if I move the girl now to the other side, you will see that we won't have these rogue words or fractions of words showing up on the left side, thanks to again, this automatic uh, filtering option. So that's another cool technique to keep an eye out for or to make sure you remember using. Okay, let's just put her back up here. I think that was quite nice, the way she's reaching into the text. And then let's not forget that you can use text wrap also for text. So we use text wrap on images so far. These are three images, all of them are using text wrap, but we can use actually text wrap on text. So here's a quote, and this is very common uh, practice in uh, magazines, that if you have an important part of the, the article, you can <clears throat> bring more attention to it by putting it into a separate frame and setting that frame to have text wrap. So if I select this one, I can again go back to text wrap settings and I can increase the margin a bit. So we have a little bit, a little bit more uh, breathing space around the text. But now we can see that it actually creates a very nice uh, separation and that works perfectly with the rest of the composition. So if I zoom a little bit closer, we can see that there is uh, the quotation mark set up and so it can be part of the copy and it works exactly the same way as I applied text wrap to images. Now, uh, hopefully this makes sense so far and hopefully you guys like how I set this up, but here's a question and uh, I will try to look at the, the um, um, comments. So just testing you guys, let's see who is really good at InDesign. You will probably notice if you pay a little bit closer attention that on this quote, I used the quotation marks, but the first quotation mark is actually outside of its frame. So don't, don't uh, look at the offset around the frame because that's just because of the text wrap, but you can see that this is the text frame itself, but the quotation mark can be hanging outside of the text frame. Now, what is that feature called and how to access it in InDesign? Let's see if anyone can give me the answer for that. That is an expert question. And these are the type of questions you can expect if you want to pass the Photoshop Certified Expert exam or Adobe Certified Expert in, sorry, not Photoshop, Adobe Certified Expert in InDesign exam um, or ACE exam as, as some people call it uh, shorter. Wow, pixel and bracket, optical alignment. Well done, very good. Now I just need to find out where this option is. If you can give me that as well, then you are, you are definitely an ace in InDesign. Uh, yes, it's called optical alignment. So that was a perfect answer. Uh, it's sometimes also referred to as Roman hanging punctuation, which is another fancy name for it. Um, so the question was, how can we make the quotation mark hanging outside of the frame? Um, so I'm just wait a little bit. Uh, yes, it's the story window, story panel. So once again, pixel and bracket, well done on that. So if I go to the uh, window menu, under that we find type and tables, story, that's one of our panels in InDesign. And within that we have this optical margin alignment option. Now if I turn that off, you see what happens is that the quotation mark gets pushed into the frame. And that creates almost like an indent on the first line, uh, like an optical indent, and that's not nice. So I aligning it to push the first 
character outside of it and it would work for also hyphens would be pushed outside of the frame especially if you are using justified text but that was a little bit of a more advanced feature i don't want to get further into that because we are talking about text wrap but yes well done again for pixel and bracket that was a very nice answer there uh, by the way guys also another question i wanted to ask let me just switch back to my um, uh, camera for a second so um I have this idea and there is one of the reasons I'm doing the the survey that you can find under the disc or in the description there's a few questions there but I'm trying this thing out because I will be able to see the answer straight away on my screen so I'm testing this thing out now so if any of you manage to already reply to those questions then I should be able to get a response on them let me just check in the meantime while I'm talking if I can see any results already yes I can see already some of you filled it out I'm not 100% sure how many of you four I've got four responses already so that is really cool because uh, that means it's going to work because what I was planning to do is to create um, seminars or like live streams where we can test you guys and your knowledge of these applications and uh, help you to prepare for exams or just generally see how well you know these products so what I'm planning to do is to have live tests running while I'm presenting and then once I get all the results from the people watching and attending my live streams I'm going to give uh, the explanations of what those questions were and we will be able to see how uh, everyone did on the live stream so let me know if that's interesting uh, if you think that is a good good uh, idea and whether you would be interested in doing that so to be examined and to be tested uh, in a live stream so while I'm doing the stream you will be able to do your test um, so we'll see I will see uh, in the comments whether you guys are interested in that or not so um, I'm just going to show it on my screen by the way this uh, the responses that I've got so far so let me just switch back to my screen so you can see already I can uh, see the responses and I can see exactly what you guys responded to so that is I'm really excited about that but let's just come back to text rep because we are still on the first feature and there's still something I need to show you here so first out of 10 we still have a lot to to cover um, but there's one thing that I wanted to show because a lot of users get uh, freaked out when this happens so um, if I have text wrap set up like on this image here sometimes you might find it difficult to access it because if it's behind the text frame then always the text frame will get selected so let me sh sh let me just show this again to you so if I click here I'm expecting the image to be selected but as you can see it's still the image sorry it's still the text frame that gets selected now if I command or control click that can help me to select items behind the text frame so now I can move that around and luckily won't select the text frame because there's a thing called in uh, called uh, favorite selection in InDesign which remembers your last selected item so even if there's something overlapping it it won't select something else it will keep your current selection so command or control click is the way to switch between the items overlapped on each other but here's another tricky thing and that's again something that you can get freaked out if you don't know what to do if you have your um, image with the text wrap set up that's perfect but what if you want to have a caption on it like this one the parrots and palm leaves if I move this text frame over the image let's say I want to place it somewhere here notice what happened is that it's completely lost I mean the text is disappeared but uh, the text frame is still there, that black frame is still there. So what you need to do is to have that frame selected in which you have your caption. And um, what you need to do is to right click on that frame and choose text frame options or remember control or command B. So once you select that, then you get to the text frame options. And this is the key feature here called ignore text wrap. If I select that, notice that it immediately comes up. So it means that this text frame can ignore the text wrap that is applied on the image behind it. So if it's not turned on, then the image behind it will push every text away from itself, while this one is now protected. 
So it's like a way of protecting that text frame and everything else will be affected by that image. So wherever I move this image, you'll see that even the code is getting pushed away. The other text frame is getting pushed away, but not that uh, live capture, sorry, that caption frame that we set up with the ignore text wrap option. How cool is that? Hopefully that makes sense. And this is all, all really you need to know about text wrap. I hope it was useful. And uh, let me move on to the next page and the next feature. So um, I can see that you guys are uh, talking to each other about the survey. Um, yeah, there is a question at the at the end about whether you are prefer you prefer theory or technical questions. That's a slider, and the further you move it to the right or left, the more you prefer. It's like a, a balance. You can decide how much you want of theory and how much you want of technical examples depending where you set that slider, all right? So if it's 100%, then that means it's more technical streams you prefer and in general videos. If it's 0%, then you mean it means that you prefer theory-based um, uh, streams and tutorials. Cool, so let me move on to the columns feature. Now, don't worry, there will be some other cool techniques with images. That's not the last one that I showed you before. But obviously InDesign is mainly about type. So there will be a lot that I'm going to show you about the more advanced typography features like working with columns. And that's something you can't really do in Illustrator or, or uh, Photoshop. So you should definitely use InDesign if you want to work with columns. So what I would like you to do is, uh, sorry, what I, what I am going to do uh, or whenever you want to do this and you have a, a text frame in uh, InDesign, just use Control B or com Command B on the text frame. And then you get to text frame options in which you can select numbers and include the, inc increase the number of columns. Now, this is, as you can see, is a very simple technique. And already our text frame looks better when I set it to three columns because there's not such a big gap as it was before, having these bulleted lists here just generates a massive gap in the middle of that text frame, so that's not nice. Uh, and having it set to three columns looks better, but it's still not the best. Because what we can also do is if I have a heading, so a larger text within this copy or article, I can decide to have that text spanning across two or three columns within this frame. So I can go up to the uh, paragraph formatting options and there is a little drop down called span and split columns in which I can choose span all. And then you can see now this paragraph will be span across, spanning across the three columns or I can also choose span two and then it will span only across the first two columns. How nice is that? So that's already nicer and still we have a three column layout. I just turned on the text out text frame outlines so you can see them, there's W on the keyboard to switch between preview and normal modes. But having it on, you can see that there's the three columns but the first paragraph is spanning across the first two columns. And similarly to that, if I select these paragraphs here, my bulleted list, that again, Although it is in a narrower column, it still doesn't look nice because we have a big gap on the right side. What we can use is instead of span, we use split to. Splitting my selection means that I created a mini column layout within a column. So it's like columns within a column. And then it already looks much nicer. So you can see that we have our columns in there. Let me just add a little bit of space here. I'll select the first one and I add a little bit of space before it like that. And then if I zoom out to see the full page, you can see that it looks much neater now that I have these things set up. But there's another very important thing. One, one thing you want to avoid on your copy and that is to have unbalanced columns. So when there's not a balance between the columns, it doesn't look nice. Like here I have my last column and there's far less text in it than the first and second columns. So if I go back to text frame options, control or command B again, the shortcut, there's an option called balance columns as well. And if I turn that on, notice how smart InDesign is that it automatically 
uh, balances or uh, distributes the copy uh, amongst these three columns. And if I make changes to my text frame, it automatically adjusts the balancing and it will have more or less copy in these columns. So this is another very neat feature. And of course, you don't have to have all the columns exactly the same. And it's actually, to be honest, better to have a little bit less text in the last column. So as long as you have it like that, let's say something like this, that's a nicely formatted three column text layout. Hopefully that makes sense again. And uh, let me move on to the next feature. So drop caps is another very common feature that we use in design for because again it's something you can't really do in the other applications and dro drop caps is something that can help you to direct your viewers to an a point in the copy where the copy usually starts so we call these entry points in design and um, i am going to double click in this text frame so that first paragraph is selected and this is the feature here in the paragraph options the one called drop cap number of lines. If I start increasing that value, notice how the first character is starting to increase in size. Now that is really cool, but what we can do is also to have a bit of space to the right of this character, putting my cursor just to the right of the first uh, letter, I can use the kerning shortcut, which is all the option left and right arrows. With that, I can have a little bit more space between this character and the rest of the text. That's just a quick fix for setting up your drop cap in InDesign. But if you want, you can also use multiple characters for your drop cap. So you can go in here and you can increase this and that will have not just the first character, but multiple characters used as a drop cap. But the only problem with this is that if you have and descender it's called, when uh, one of your letters are overlapping the lines underneath, then that means it's going to create a less uh, engaging copy where obviously it's difficult to read it. So what you need to do in these cases is to go into the additional settings for drop caps and nested styles. You can also access that by alt clicking on the drop cap icon. So alt or option clicking on that takes you to the same place. And here is the option called scale for descenders, which will help you to avoid that overlap. So that's another pro tip there for you, uh, which you can use to fix your drop caps in case you want to use the senders. But of course, InDesign again is really smart. If I use the shortcut Control Shift K, uh, then of course there won't be any overlap, so we won't have to worry about it. It's just a good thing that we have this option in there. All right, so um, I am going to just go back a couple of steps. So I'm going to keep my first letter uh, set to the drop cap. And I wanted to show you another cool thing is that if you have a text frame with a separate text inside it, so it's a different font as well intentionally, uh, this actually can be used as a drop cap as well. So if I cut this out or copy it and double click inside my frame, and then I paste it, so copy was Command C or Control C, and then pasting it is Edit, Paste or Command or Control V, will place that uh, letter or that whole text frame inside my text frame and it's called an uh, inline image or anchoring where you have that text frame within a text frame and in this case of course you have to just delete the first uh, character because you don't want to have them twice and then of course we can use our kerning just like before to set it up like that so you have your um, drop cap character and that is an actual separate frame. And the cool thing about having a text frame within another item, I mean another frame, is that you can still move it freely up and down. So I can adjust it if I want to, but it already behaves as a drop cap because that's how I set up my paragraph. Now, if I delete this, I can also have an image placed in there. So this is obviously an image or that one, maybe let's just try this one out. If I cut that out or copy it and paste it in here, that will work exactly the same way. So we can select that image and we can move it up and down. So if I want, I can move it down and adjust maybe, maybe the drop cap a little bit higher, something like that. 
I'll move it back up and once again we have a nice drop cap but now we have to probably increase increase the kerning a bit more so there's many different ways you can set these things up and although this image is a little bit more uh, complex to set up because you would probably want to refine it a bit further maybe use even text wrap on it but for now uh, i'm going to move on to the next feature and hopefully this made sense how to work with drop caps now as I mentioned in the beginning of the stream, uh, InDesign is amazing for, for to work with typography and work with type in general, but it's not all about type. It can be used to work with images and of course in all uh, layouts you will have to work with images and text together. And although InDesign is not for uh, manipulating and com combining or compositing images together, because Photoshop is the best tool for that, it still allows you to do some amazing things. So for example, here on this image, I already set up before this, no, actually I didn't set up, I did it in a way that I'm going to show you now. So what I want to do is to make a feature, uh, like a technique, it's called out of bounds effect. I would like to recreate that on this image where we will make it look like these buildings are coming out of the frame. So if I alt double click on this image, we already know that that opens it up in Photoshop. And what I'm going to do in Photoshop is to create a path on this. Now I will start by selecting the sky and I'm going to use the magic wand or the quick selection tool is probably even better. With that I can do a very quick selection of the sky in this case. And then that's the quick selection tool, just simply paint over the sky. And then I go to the paths panel in which I'm going to choose this option at the bottom right corner called make work path from selection. So the selection is now turned into a work path and to make sure that this will work in InDesign I will have to double click on its name. So up here in the paths panel I just double clicked on the name and I am going to uh, name it, let's just call this sky. And actually that is going to be what we need yes i think it's going to work so if i save this i just save it back into that image that i'm using and now if i come back to indesign i will be able to go to the object menu and choose clipping path options or notice that there is a shortcut command shift command alt shift k or control alt shift k selecting that we can get to the clipping path options and notice that we have an option now called Photoshop path. That's the thing that we haven't had before. That's the one that we saved in Photoshop. So we can access it. And the cool thing, I don't know how many of you guys notice, but this is actually saved into a JPEG. Okay. So um, the JPEG can hold paths. And if you use them in InDesign, you can still access those paths. And notice what happens is that by using that path that was saved there, I can now show the sky or the opposite of that by using the invert option. And even better than that, I can actually, if I zoom closer, I can actually make changes to this by, for example, using my pen tool, I can remove some of those points. So I'm accessing the path within the, um, in the, uh, within the JPEG and I can update it. So uh, obviously I saw that there, there was a couple of mistakes here. So I'm trying to amend that by adjusting this. Let me just zoom a little bit even closer. And then I'll just remove that point as well. Just using the pen tool, I managed to fix that quickly. And now it looks already much better. But if I want to create an out of bounds effect, this is not all that I would do. What I would also do is to create a copy of this image so copy and uh, I am going to paste it over this image. So now we have two versions of the same thing, but then I make sure that they are aligned on top of each other. And then I am going to turn off the um, path on this version. So I go back to the clipping path options and choose none. That means it brought back the original sky. And now comes the trick. So we have the most and the original version and then the original version sky i'm just going to simply drag down and here comes the cool thing if i drag it further down notice how we are creating our lovely 
out of bounds effect. So let me just move this behind. Why, why is it not aligned? I probably just messed up the alignment. So let me just move this back where it's supposed to be. Yep, it wasn't aligned. So now once again, if I move it down, there's the out of bounds effect and I can move it further down, probably somewhere around here. Uh, maybe that's a bit too much. Maybe we can set it somewhere there so we can still see the sky. But then we have those two buildings coming out of the frame. Magic. <laughs> yes, that's definitely a cool technique. And let me just show you quickly the real power in using clipping masks. So, for example, on this image here, I created a clipping mask and I have another image behind it. So instead of that boring sky that we had, that one, we have now a much more interesting sky. So I have two images on top of each other here in InDesign. And then if I move this text in here, let's say somewhere roughly around there, I'm just going to increase slightly the size. I can use the command square brackets or control square brackets to move the text back a little bit. And I can keep it, keep the text behind the uh, mountains but still in front of the sky and then I can select this text again and set it maybe to white like that and then I would be able to continue adding like drop shadow and so on and so forth and you can imagine how far we can get with this and we can again have uh, changes to the sky uh, we can even use uh, corner effects on it and so on and so forth so that's just another way of using uh, clipping masks in InDesign. Hopefully you like that. So let me move on to the next one. Um, and <laughs> this was something if you guys follow me on social media, on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, I posted this um, just an hour before the session um, and asked you guys whether you know what this is about. Well, this is about fixing copy in InDesign. So <laughs> there's three terms we use in typography, orphans, widows and runs. Um, runt is actually something that you might not be familiar with this term. It's actually used for uh, puppies and like small, uh, like I mean the, the puppies, like dogs, um, and the shortest or the smallest animal in, uh, in, uh, amongst all of them is usually called a runt. But it's also used for um, typography when we talk about aligning the text or like arranging copy, uh, especially the body copy itself. So let me show you an example here that I prepared. Um, this one is uh, a document I prepared in advance. And here I explain what each of these mean. So orphans are uh, those instances of copy where the first line of a paragraph is at the end of a column. So let me just show you how that would look like. So an orphan would look like this. All right. So we have the first line of a paragraph uh, at the bottom of the paragraph. And the way you can remember the term is that an orphan is left behind. OK, so it's left here while everything else moved ahead. Now, the other one, the video is very similar to this. That's when the last line of a paragraph is in the beginning of a column. So we, you can again remember it as the video must go alone. So that doesn't look nice either. And the runt is a single word or a portion of a hyphenated word that appears as the last line of a paragraph like this one here. And this one, for example, is both a runt and a video. OK, so you can even have a runt video, which is even worse, a combination of two problems that you can have with type. So how can we avoid having these is by using uh, the following features. By the way, I want to mention again that these examples that I'm showing here, not all of them, but the most interesting ones, you will be able to download and use if you sign up uh, and become one of uh, become a patron of Yes, I'm a Designer. So check out the Patreon site where you can already download a couple of uh, cool things for free. But if you decide to get access to all of these exercise files that I'm showing, um, you can just join and be a Patreon. You will see the options. There's the different tiers with different accesses. Uh, it's just something that uh, worth exploring and hopefully you will decide to, to help. And by the way, I'm giving these files away 
but by supporting the channel you will help me and and uh, everyone else i'm working together with to be able to do more live streams more uh examples and uh, more tutorials as well in the future for the channel so it's a uh, it's a big help any any little help is great and uh we would really appreciate if you uh, help us on Patreon. All right, so, but coming back to my screen, let me just go back to the screen and show you quickly how to solve this uh, problem. So to get rid of orphans and widows, that's a very quick fix. All you have to do is to use a paragraph style uh, on your body copy, which you can set up from the paragraph styles panel. And then within that paragraph style, just simply go to the keep options so there's a category called keep options and simply turn on keep lines together so notice in the background it already fixed the video because now there's two lines kept together but this keep lines together will automatically keep the first two lines and last two lines together so that is already fixed and i'm just going to show you that in case i was about to change the text like this you can see we have two lines there at the bottom but if I move any further up it won't allow me to have one line on its own so it won't allow me to have an orphan it automatically fixes that and the same way it would work here as well it won't allow single lines to be at the beginning or the end of a paragraph so that is great but we still have an issue with the runt so the single words at the end of paragraphs which are still not looking nice for that we have to be a little bit more tricky. We have to set up a character style, and this is where InDesign gets a bit more advanced. So if you feel like this is a bit too much, uh, don't worry, because these are all things that I explain in great detail in my InDesign masterclass. So um, that's something uh, where, where I go step by step and I build up from the easiest things to the very complex things even much more complex things than what I'm going to show in this stream. So if you are interested, uh, check out that course. So if I come back to the character styles panel and create a new character style, I can call this one uh, glue. I normally just call it glue, but we can call it no break because that's the feature. And it is under the basic character formats. And there it is, it's just simply called no break. So doesn't matter what you call the style, as long as you turn on the no break option, that will work. And that's what we will be using within our paragraph style. So having that character style ready, now I can go back to my body copy paragraph style and I am going to go to grab style. And grab is a feature I will talk a little bit more about because it's one of my favorite features. And look at this, if I go to grab style and choose new grab style, I can now find my no break character style and I can tell in design what to use that for. So no break means that it won't allow to have whatever this, whatever this character style is applied to, it won't be allowed to break into multiple lines. So it will always be kept together in the same line. So what I want to use is a code, it's like a short code, an expression, uh, full stop, curly bracket, 15, curly bracket, close, and dollar sign. And if I click anywhere here, notice immediately my runs from the copy disappeared. And what happened actually is that I specified that the last line or the end of the paragraph, which is the dollar sign, can only be, or minimum, it has to be 15 characters long, okay? So it cannot be less than 15 characters. If I change this value here, let's say to 20, then you see my last lines all around the paragraph will increase in size. So that's how it works. We created a smart connection between a character style and a paragraph style using an expression. And it's almost like coding when you start using grep. But I'm going to talk a little bit more about grab soon. But for now, that's all I wanted to show. So fixing your body copy is very, very important. And it is something that you might not think of when you work in InDesign, but immediately, as soon as you have a few paragraphs uh, that is considered normally your body copy, uh, that is something that shouldn't have orphans, widows, and runs. As long as you fix those, that's already a good thing. And after that, you can think about other uh, like treatments to your type. 
but this these are very common things and it's something I have set up by default so whenever I start a new document I already have the body copy set up that way and if I need to make any changes I would only need to change the font but all these settings that I've showed you would be already within uh, the document okay and we are halfway through so we have uh, six uh, sorry five more features and I will talk a little bit more about crap uh, just after this in another example but before uh, I show you that I would like to just have a short break and uh, it's only a minute and a half let me just show you uh, or play a short video in which I show you what the InDesign masterclass is about so this is the course in which um, I go through everything in InDesign and this has been released just very recently literally I think yesterday it was ready I had early access to the course before but uh, it is finished now and it's available on my site and you can find a link in the description and I have an amazing 50% discount on this course uh, for a limited time so you can find the link there and you can find the course uh, link so let me just play this quickly and then I will continue with the rest of the five features in the stream so just hang in there while I show you this video Hello and welcome to Adobe InDesign Masterclass. I'm Martin Perhiniak, graphic designer and Adobe certified instructor. This course is aimed at anyone who wants to master this industry standard page design and layout application. Although it is a very extensive course and it starts with the basics, I created lessons to provide useful techniques and workflows even for seasoned InDesign users. I'm proud to say that I was officially voted to be one of the top 10 Adobe instructors in the world by student feedback and that is mainly because I'm truly passionate about both teaching and using InDesign. Thanks to more than 10 years of experience teaching this application I managed to formulate a course outline that is very comprehensive but also streamlined to make it easy to follow and digest. But learning what each feature does is not enough because you will find out about those from the help menu or YouTube video tutorials. What I'm adding to these lessons is my knowledge of how InDesign is used in the creative industry, using the skills and experience that I picked up and built as a designer working for clients like Disney, Mattel, Cartoon Network, Nickelodeon and BBC. So learning InDesign from this course will help you to start using it from the very beginning as a creative professional would. In the next video, I will explain more about what makes InDesign so crucial in every designer's workflow. Okay, so let's continue. Uh, that was just a little bit of intermission. Um, I, I could have a bit of water and <laughs> prepare myself for the next five features. Um, so I just asked in the chat, uh, by the way, what was the favorite feature out of the first five? I can see Sandesh saying fixing copy for sure. I'm glad you like that. So if you like that, and I can see Blob <laughs> said uh, text wrap was, the, fa was uh, the favorite. So that's cool. So if, if you guys liked fixing copy with uh, the feature I showed you in the previous one, this will be also very similar. Um, using grab is something that most most InDesign users find later on when they have been using the product for years and then once they discover it they, they start to love it but it's hard to get into it because it's similar to coding and uh, it's, it's, it's a language that it uses it's definitely something you need time to get into and I prepared this example which again is uh, available on my Patreon site you can download it from there um, I will I will publish it after this stream is finished so um, here in this I collected a few examples of uh, expressions that you can use uh, for grab and I won't spend too much time on this I just want to show you that if you have a copy and it has the first words uh, of a sentence on the last on uh, on the end on the right side of your lines so a line ends with the first word 
of uh, a sentence that doesn't look good so I even highlighted them in red just so you can see how it looks and um, this is something that should be kept together so they if and or a these shouldn't be hanging there on the right side because it's not comfortable to read them but using this simple expression here with that no break feature that I showed you before we can make sure that if that's applied then these will be automatically formatted in the right place so look at this this is without the expression and that is with the expression and all I did there is to use that paragraph style with a grab style that has that code added using that no break uh, character style that we used previously. So I'm not going to spend time on explaining what the expression actually means. It's actually written down in this document. So if you download it from Patreon, you will be able to learn exactly what this means. But here's another example. If you have short uh, words within a sentence like a uh, or a is it these are also not nice to have at the end of a line. So once again, with the right expressions that I have here on the left side, this can be fixed and kept away from the edges or the end of your lines. And similarly to this, if you want to make sure that compound words, words that are divided with a dash line or hyphen are not separated, they can also be kept together in the same line with that expression on the left. So these are all the expression that I, that I added into the same paragraph style. So it's actually the same paragraph style I'm using, even for th things like keeping uh, proper nouns together. So names of people or objects or locations are called proper nouns. It's like this one here, creative director or South England or XSD 4000 S, uh, which is a product name. These can all be kept together with this longer expression. So <laughs> this is where it starts to get a little bit more complex. And uh, you can see why I'm, I'm saying that this is almost like coding or developing because you are specifying a behavior and you are telling InDesign to always use that whenever this paragraph style is active. So once again, coming back to the grab style, you can see that I have all of these options set on the same paragraph style. So you can nest or embed all these uh, grab styles into the same paragraph style. And it can be a very powerful feature if you do it uh, on, on a regular basis. And you can reuse these expressions in other documents because it's very easy to import and export paragraph styles from a document. All you have to do is to simply say load paragraph styles or load all text styles. And that way you can load in your saved existing styles from other documents into a new one. So let me move on to our next feature. So that's just another glimpse of what can be achieved with grab, but there's a lot more that you can do with grab. Um, here's another really cool one called data merge. And this is actually when Excel, uh, Microsoft Excel and InDesign starts to work together. And it's a, another amazing uh, feature I use very often. So here's another example. This is again available to download, uh, will be available to download from um, the uh, Patreon site. So what I'm going to do is to have a template ready. As you can see, it just has one page in it. But what I will do is to open up the data merge panel. And you can see I have these frames ready, but I already added uh, these, uh, these elements or entries into the frames. And these entries are actually opening this text file or they are connected to that text file. I can show you uh, the text file itself. So if I select the data source, actually, no, I'm not going to change that. I am just going to show you quickly. Then if I go back to that, let me just find that file now. Just one second. Data merge text file. Yeah, there you go. So this is the one that I wanted to show you. Okay, so that's the text file. And within the text file, it starts with these entries. So we have title at image means that this is an image. That's a simple code for image uh, category. And then we have background, text, format and size. And for the image, we have to have the file name, which is 0.1 JPEG. For the rest, we just simply have to have copy. 
and then when you press line break that means it's a new page so that's the text file and it can be an excel file as well um, most of the time it works best with a csv or text file which can be created in excel most of the time and once you import that text file into the indesign document all you have to do is to click on preview to populate these text frames with the data from that text file and from the images in the same folder. So you can see immediately that I can go through all the pages and it automatically fills in all the necessary elements based on the data coming from that uh, spreadsheet or text file. How amazing is that? I mean, it can save so much time for creating invitations where you need to change the name and a couple of details, maybe even the image and having a spreadsheet with all the information that's necessary. You just have to create one template in InDesign and using data merge, you can combine the information and populate your document. So if I here click on this icon to create the merged document, I can just click OK and it will generate a new document with all the merged information. So now you can see we have all the pages generated and this can be saved as a PDF and then printed out and we have everything set up. And notice how not only the image and the title changes, but between the pages, all the additional information changes. And I didn't have to do anything apart from connecting the spreadsheet information or the data with the InDesign file, which created the design. All right, so data merge is another amazing thing. For business cards as well, I use this all the time. So I might design the, the style of a business card in Illustrator, but then I would use data merge in InDesign to actually have it, for, have it ready for all the employees. So you would have maybe a company with 10, 20 employees, then you would prepare all the names and their professions and their contact details in a spreadsheet, save it out as a CSV or text file, and then combine it in InDesign with the design that you prepared. And that way you will have all the different versions of the business card ready to print. So if you guys are interested, maybe I can do a live stream on that or I might do a course on it. I will see how to do business cards and maybe stationaries uh, later on. But <laughs> here's our next feature, feature number eight. So we have three left. This is feature number eight, uh, magic with styles or automation with styles. Now, you've already seen me working with paragraph and character styles, um, but there's another category called object styles in InDesign. And I am going to show you a feature now where I use the three of them together and create an automation of multiple styles altogether. So let me show you this example. Here in this document, I have a, a couple of pages. It's like a travel brochure for Dorset. This is, by the way, where I live. These are my photos. Um, there's some beautiful places around south of England and uh, some really nice uh, hiking routes. I love hiking. so. I always take pictures wherever I go. But yeah, so I prepared this simple example and this obviously is something that I go in detail again in the InDesign Masterclass. So uh, what I would like to show you here is that you can see that this is formatted obviously. So we have a heading, we have a drop cap, we have the text and even something like the door set, wherever the word door set, which is the region's name, comes up, then it automatically is formatted to this uh, style, which is in blue and in, in bold. But if I go to my last page, that looks much, much worse because there's no styling applied at all. This is the default Minion Pro font. There's nothing applied on this. So it's the complete basic paragraph. Nothing works on it just yet. But the cool thing is that is in InDesign, you can create connections between object styles, paragraph styles, and character styles. And all I'm going to do here is to click on this object style called destination text frame. And as soon as I click on that, look at this, it sorted out the whole text frame. So it automatically assigned my heading style to the first paragraph. Then it knew to apply a drop cap in the first paragraph of the copy. Then it also knew to change the copy and to have every time the word Dorset appears, a different style applied on that. Everything is automatic. And if you don't believe me, let me show you this again. Here's my copy. 
and I just simply click on destination text frame and it's all automatically sorts itself out. So that is the real power in working with styles in InDesign and I can't stress this anymore. Um, that's really the heart and soul of working with InDesign to learn the connection and automation between these different type of styles. And just to show you briefly that if I go into the, uh, let's say one of my styles like the heading paragraph style, the key is that it can pass on the copy onto the next style. So when heading style is applied, after the first instance of it, it automatically moves on to the next style, which is called intro copy. And then when intro copy is used once, it will automatically pass on it uh, on to the the third paragraph style called copy. And that's how it can go. And then obviously each of these have also connections with character styles. And all of this is wrapped up into a object style but I'm probably uh, I'm probably saying style too much so <laughs> let me just go back to my example I hope you like this so it's it's definitely saves so much time when you work in, in InDesign and uh, InDesign is definitely the smartest when it comes to work with styles so um, let me move on to the uh, nine uh, feature number nine so we have two more left this is called table of contents and that is something that once again only InDesign can do for you in a smart and automated way so coming back to the same example I can come to the first page and notice that we have only three articles here page number two three and four but we also have page number five um, and now that I applied my styles I will be able to demonstrate that this table of contents is actually not just copy written, it's actually automatically generated. And if I go to the layout menu, I can just choose update table of contents. And there you go, immediately shows the other articles or destinations that we assigned our styles to in the previous example. So the way table of contents work in InDesign is that it relies on the paragraph styles. So I can go into the table of contents options from the layout menu and you can see that here what it uses is the styles on uh, from the document. So in this case the heading paragraph style is the one that is being tracked. So it is tracking that style and that wherever that style shows up in the document will be automatically included in the table of contents. And the cool thing about this is that if I move one of these articles around, let's say this one, which is currently on page number two, if I move this to the end of the document, so simply just drag it in the pages panel and places at the end, now, if we zoom back here closer, you can see that the medi medieval castle uh, is still the first one, but as soon as I go to layout, update table of contents, it automatically realigns uh, the entries in the table of contents according to the changes in the document. So that's exactly what you want. And I can see already uh, uh, some responses in the chat. I'm glad that this is something that's useful for, uh, for you guys. Table of content is tricky to set up, but once it's set up, it saves you so much time and also it avoids to have mistakes in a document. So if you have a very long document with lots of pages, then you don't want to rely on manual type, typing in each of the entries because if there's any changes in the document later, you will always have to double check everything. And if it's not automated, you will easily end up having um, issues. So the table of contents won't be up to date to the content. So it's a huge time saver, uh, definitely. And I just want to point out that you can stylize your table of contents. So although it's automated and automatically populates itself with the changes in the document, it can be very nicely stylized. And there's so many different things. Like you can see here, I use these little dots. That's also just using a character style between the entries and the number. These are all things, again, I explain in way more detail in my InDesign Masterclass. So whoever really wants to learn about these fine little things in this application, I highly recommend to check out my course. Uh, and there's the link with the 50% discount uh, for a limited time 
in under this video if you want to get access to the to the course and last but not least I wanted to show you publish online which is only unfortunately in the creative cloud version and by the way all the previous features that I showed can be used in previous versions as well. I think probably CS5 and CS6 should have all the previous options that I showed you. Um, apart from this one, this is only in Creative Cloud. So Creative Cloud has this feature called Publish Online, which we can find up here on the top right corner. And the cool thing about this option is that with this, you can very quickly share a document online and via just by simply sending a link to someone and all i have to do is to give it a name i'm just going to keep it as it is at the moment and i can even think set up things like allowing viewers to download the document as a pdf or not and then i can click on publish and what will happen is that it will be uploaded to the adobe servers and uh, I will be able to make changes to this document in the future and update the same link if I want to. So if that link is shared with a lot of people already, if I want that document to update, I can do that and it will update everywhere that link is shared. And even better than that, this can even be embedded in websites and it's going to be a fully functional little uh, document reader online document reader. So if I go to view document, I can show you how it looks. So it opens up in the browser and I will be able to go through the pages like that, just like a PDF. But I can also open up my uh, pages here at the bottom and I can toggle between them like that. And I can also uh, download this PDF if the author allowed it. But even better than that, if there's any interactive feature in the document, that will also work. So you can even have videos inside it. You can have a YouTube video embedded in here because InDesign is very powerful for interactive features as well. And that is something you can find under the window menu, interactive panel category. These are all the different things you can do. You can do even animation, buttons, hyperlinks, media, uh, multi-state objects, page transitions and so on and so forth. So of course you can also save uh, not just interactive uh, content with the publish online, but you can also use interactive PDF format for this and you can also create EPUBs, both fixed, uh, fixed EPUBs, let me just show you, export. And here we can find fixed layout EPUBs or reflowable EPUBs for, for devices like Kindle. Okay. So that's all what I wanted to show you and I hope you found this um, stream useful. And uh, the 10 things InDesign does best is probably is something that I would be able to do another round up and another 10 features, but these were my favorite features that I wanted to show you. And uh, before we finish off, I would like to ask you guys whether you have any questions. So because I didn't really have time uh, during the presentation to reply to your uh, questions, if you have any questions I wa you wanted to ask me, feel free to do so. Um, but yeah, so these were the features that uh, you really InDesign is the best for. Um, although Illustrator and Photoshop can do amazing things as well. Um, InDesign is, spe is a specialized tool to work mainly with text and combining text and images together, as you could see. So um, I, I saw a couple of questions in the chat. Like I can see one now. What program you use to show us what's on the screen and on your camera? I'm using Wire, Wirecast Play. So this is... Um, an encoder and the streaming uh, application. It's not free. There's also free uh, versions of it. Just look into streaming encoders and then you can find different uh, uh, options for it. But this one I'm using is called Wirecast Play. You can see another question. In TextWrap, did the woman picture have an alpha or was it in white background? It had white background. So I got away without the selection. But if you don't have a selection, 
um, sorry, if you don't have a white background uh, and you want to make sure that it has a proper cut cutout, you have to do that before in Photoshop, before you bring the image into InDesign. All right, so um, let me see if there's any other questions. All right, so I don't think there's any other questions right now, but feel free to get in touch with me on um, in email or uh, on Twitter or Facebook. Uh, probably Twitter is the best. Uh, I can I can see uh, tweets and I usually reply to them. And uh, don't forget that on Patreon as well, uh, you can uh, reply to any uh, any anything that I share of course here on YouTube as well if you are watching the recorded version uh, I would love to see what you thought of this um, presentation what which feature was most useful for you and maybe what are you most interested in for the future what you want to learn also don't forget that there is a link under the video in the description about uh, some questions uh, it's a short survey if you fill it out it will help me to tailorize the next uh, content or the next streams and tutorials and uh, if you want to learn more about InDesign if you want to master this amazing application then check out my uh, InDesign CC masterclass which I've worked on probably spent the last four months preparing that course so I put so much work and effort into it and hopefully you guys will check it out there's again a link with a 50% 50% discount under uh, in, in the description and uh, I already have uh, a couple of people uh, watching and learning from it and uh, the reviews so far are great so hopefully that's something you will find useful as well so thanks a lot again for everyone to join me today and uh, I will be sharing the exercise files on Patreon and uh, I will schedule the next stream for uh, Sunday. Um, it might be slightly earlier next time. So I will have to see, it might even be on Saturday, but I will schedule the next live stream soon. Uh, probably on Monday or Tuesday it should be already scheduled so then you can see ahead and know when I'm going to be live and to be able to attend uh, the seminar or this session live so once again um, okay I, <laughs> I can see someone saying in the in the chat that uh, interested in buying all the courses there's actually a better option for that you can uh, subscribe to my courses with for a, a smaller monthly fee uh, but I'm going to just play another vid video here at the end about that feature. So once again, thanks a lot for joining me today and I will see you guys in the next one. Goodbye. Thanks a lot for staying till the end. I hope you found this video useful. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel as I'm adding similar content regularly. If you are interested in learning more from me, you should probably check out my comprehensive training courses on my site. I have more than 200 hours of video training from beginner to expert levels with lots of exercises, quizzes and resources to help you develop your skills and become a professional designer. Just click on this link and create an account to start your free trial. Thanks again for joining me today and I hope to see you in the next one.